Okay, so this is just continuing. Uh, like I was saying, um, when the left endpoint is the height, you have to subtract one factor of your change in x so that you can get the height that you want it to be at. So like, uh, like I said, with this rectangle, with the lower sum, your, your actual height is right there on the graph. So, but when you, when you do this 2i over n, then uh, when you pop in that 1, you're coming to the far right of the first rectangle. So you're going to have to subtract a factor of your change in x in order to get the height that you want for that rectangle. And then I stated here, whenever you have a left endpoint as the height, you have to subtract one factor of the change in x. Um, whenever you have a right endpoint as the height, as with the upper sum in this rectangle, then uh, you can just do it as we did with the upper sum and just do your change of x times i. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. That was the hardest part for me to grasp when we were learning this. Um, but, yeah, feel free to look up any other videos that might explain that better than I can. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not professional or anything, so. Uh, continuing with the problem, if we, now that we have our new input, we plug that into our original equation x squared. And we're given summation. 2i over n minus 2 over n squared times our change in x. From there, um, could do some uh, you can make this 2i minus 2 over n squared times 2n and then uh, if you were to foil this all out then you get something like what is it? 4i squared um, minus uh, 2i times negative 2, negative 4i minus 8i plus 4 all over n squared. And you've still got that 2 over n hanging out. Oops, it's a little bit too low. I'll just do it on the next one. You can factor out a 4 from the numerator. Get i squared minus uh, 2i plus 1, all divided by n squared, all times 2 over n. Uh, as you can see, these things can get pretty long and tedious, but uh, remember that there's going to be an easier way in um, 4.3 to solve all of this. From this first thing, to isolate the i's, we can factor out a 4 over n squared. Notice that if you were to multiply these two back, you'd come out to the same as this thing up here. And then also bring down that 2 over n. You could get all of your n's together, and so you 
you could multiply this one and this one and you get 8 over n cubed times i squared minus 2i plus 1 bring this out to the front to isolate your i's on the right side of the sigma notation 8 over n cubed times uh, n i equals 1 i squared minus 2 2 i plus 1 minus and recall that you can separate this into three sections and do uh, make it as um, three summation problems you can bring out this two to the uh, since it's a constant you can bring it out in front of its sigma sign I equals one of one going to move this up do some uh, nice summation substitutions um, we'll be using numbers three and two get eight over n third n to the third times uh, what is it n times n plus one times two n plus one divided by six minus 2 times n times n plus 1 all over 2 plus n. Uh, those can cancel. And yes. Uh, after distributing all of these, you get mm, 8 over n to the third times that's n squared plus n times 2n plus 1 all over 6 minus n squared plus n. Um, Up a 6 in front of that and divide by 6. Get a common denominator. Divide by 6 right there. 8 over n to the third. And that's going to be 2n to the third plus 3n squared plus n minus 6n squared. Uh, minus 6 plus 6n all over 6. So now these things can break down into 4 thirds and um, after doing a final combining combine some like terms over here and you get 8n to the third plus that's uh, negative 3n squared times 4 plus negative 12n squared um, 7n so plus 28n minus 24 all over 3n to the third pop a limit in front of it so we can find out the actual area and your result comes out to be 8 thirds. Um, that's a pretty long problem. 
I hope you guys understand what I did with this part, especially with the minus 2n. Um, remember that when you have a left endpoint that's indicative of the height of the rectangle, then uh, you're going to have to subtract that one factor of change in x. If you have a right endpoint, don't worry about that. Just um, do what you do the simple thing and just take your change in x and multiply it by i. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully that video made sense, if anything. Um, there's a couple examples if you just want to learn how to do it from a different video but want a different example on it um, and the next sections uh, pretty soon we'll be learning the easy way so yeah